While returning home after buying a new online game, a teenage boy named Kazuma notices that a school girl is about to get run over by a truck. Jumping after her, he pushes her out of the way but suddenly realizes that he has died in the process as he finds himself in front of a blue-haired goddess, Aqua. Much to his surprise, Aqua begins making fun of him, telling him that the girl was never in any danger of getting hit by the truck. Moving on, Aqua tells Kazuma about the choice that lies ahead of him. He can either go to heaven, where he will be at peace for the rest of time, or he can get reborn into another world that needs help. She grants him one special power or item of his choice to bring into the other world when he gets reborn. She becomes annoying, so in order to pay her back, he chooses her to be the one thing he brings along into the other world. Before Aqua realizes what he chose, she ends up agreeing. Then another goddess appears, acknowledging the terms and wishing both of them best of luck in defeating the Devil King. While Kazuma is laughing maniacally for getting one over Aqua, the other goddess promises to grant him any wish he desires should they succeed in their task. The two of them appear in the middle of a bustling, medieval fantasy town. Aqua immediately freaks out, not knowing what she should do now, since she cannot return home until the Devil King is slain. Kazuma manages to calm her down and using his game logic to lead them to the Adventurers Guild in order to gather information and sign them up to become adventurers. At the Adventurers Guild, they are greeted by the receptionist, Luna, who tells them that they will need to pay the registration fee if they want to join. Since neither of them have any money, they end up wondering what they should do about it. Aqua notices a priest nearby and approaches him, introducing herself as the goddess from the religious order of Axis and requests some money from him. The priest turns out to be from a different sect, belonging to the goddess Eris who is ranked below Aqua. Even so, the priest decides to be generous and give Aqua the money she's asking for, but reprimanding her for pretending to be a goddess. Aqua does not take it well, feeling shaken for not being recognized as the goddess, as well as being pitied by a priest belonging to Eris. Using the priest's coins, the two of them sign up as adventurers. While signing up, their power is measured, and they are given adventurer cards, which they can use for identification and to upgrade their skills and classes as they grow stronger. Kazuma ends up being very average across the board, with the only exception being his overwhelmingly high luck, which makes him a rather weak adventurer. On the other hand, Aqua's stats are all extremely high except for her intelligence, which is below average, and luck, which is the lowest possible level. The entire Adventurer's Guild celebrates the fact that someone as powerful as Aqua has joined them, looking forward to her future exploits. Kazuma is excited at his new beginning as an adventurer in this fantasy world, but his excitement is short-lived as he ends up doing manual labor together with Aqua day in and day out. It turns out that most of the monsters in this area have already been exterminated, so there are no requests for starting out adventurers like them. Living in stables and sleeping on hay next to Aqua is really bringing Kazuma down. Deciding it is time to do something about their situation, they go looking for a kill quest. Taking on a quest to kill five giant frogs, Kazuma and Aqua find themselves out in the field. While Kazuma is running for his life, Aqua is making fun of how pathetic he is. But the giant frog quickly loses interest in Kazuma and shifts its focus onto Aqua. Since she is not paying attention, the frog easily jumps up to her and swallows her whole. Kazuma pushes himself and somehow manages to defeat the frog and rescue Aqua. Completely covered in frog slime, Aqua thanks Kazuma for saving her life. Noticing another giant frog nearby, Aqua decides to take out her frustration on it. Charging at it with full power, she punches the frog, but the attack does not seem to phase it at all. Just like that, she gets swallowed again, and it is up to Kazuma to save her. Returning to the guild, Kazuma decides it is for the best if they look for other adventurers to join their party. Aqua reassures him that everyone will want to join their party because she is there, but as time passes, no one seems interested. Just as they are about to give up, a girl with red eyes and a large pointy hat appears before them. She introduces herself as Megumin, the arch wizard. While telling them that she specializes in explosion magic, she is overcome by weakness and collapses. Apparently, she has not eaten in days, so Kazuma offers to buy her a meal. At first, he thought she was making fun of them because of her strange name and speech pattern, but Aqua explains that Megumin is a crimson demon, and they tend to be that way. Deciding to give her a shot, they bring her along to hunt the remaining giant frogs for their quest. Aqua tries to show how powerful she really is and charges at one of the giant frogs, but her attack does nothing yet again, getting her swallowed in the process. On the other hand, Megumin unleashes her devastating explosion magic, obliterating one giant frog with ease. The shockwave attracts another giant frog to their location. 
And it is then that Megumin reveals that casting explosion magic completely exhausts her magic reserves, rendering her immobile after just one cast. Being completely helpless, she gets swallowed by a giant frog too, making Kazuma save both of them by himself. After the successful rescue, the three of them are heading back to the guild. Kazuma has to carry Megumin who is still unable to walk on her own. On the way back, Kazuma tells Megumin to use other types of magic so she would not be put in this situation again, but she refuses, declaring that explosion magic is the ultimate form of magic and she will not use any other magic no matter what. Hearing that, Kazuma wants to refuse her from joining their party, but Megumin is determined to stay with them, as no other adventurers want her. They start arguing and attracting attention from the random passerby. Some of them wonder what Kazuma has done to the girls as they are both covered in slime. Noticing the situation, Megumin uses it to her advantage and starts screaming how he made her do lewd things, until Kazuma convinces her to stop by accepting her into the party. Back at the guild, they are given the reward for clearing their quest, but Kazuma is worried if their party will be able to accomplish anything, let alone defeat the Devil King. At that moment, he is approached by a beautiful blonde girl who is dressed as a knight. She introduces herself as Darkness, a crusader, and she wants to join their party as well. Apparently, she has seen the two girls covered in slime that accompany him, and decided that this party is the right place for her. Kazuma warns her that their party is very weak and they are most likely going to get eaten by monsters, which only seems to make her even more motivated to join. Kazuma quickly notices that she is a weirdo as well and ends up refusing her. The next day, Kazuma is trying to find a way to learn new skills as his level has increased from clearing a quest. Darkness manages to find him yet again, pressing him to accept her into his party, and she is accompanied by Chris, a thief. Hearing that Kazuma wants to learn new skills, Chris offers to teach him some useful thief skills if he buys her a drink. Kazuma quickly accepts the offer and learns the new skills from Chris, activating them on his adventurer card. In order to give one of the skills a shot, Chris shows him how to use steel. When Kazuma tries out the skill on her instead of stealing her coin pouch, his overwhelmingly high luck makes him steal her panties. Witnessing that makes Darkness excited again. And when they return to the guild, everyone is mortified to hear that he made Chris pay him to return her panties. Kazuma then demonstrates the steal skill he learned in front of everyone, and instead of stealing a random item, ends up stealing panties once again, this time from Megumin. This makes Darkness insist that she joins his party no matter what, so Kazuma decides to tell them that they will have to fight the Devil King one day, hoping this will make Darkness and Megumin leave his party. But learning that has the exact opposite effect on them, Megumin wants to put her glorious explosive magic to the test against a strong opponent and Darkness has her own fantasies of getting captured and abused by the Devil King. While Kazuma is wondering what to do about this, all adventurers are urgently summoned to the city gates. Apparently, it is harvest season and in this world cabbages fly and need to be hunted down before they wither away. One such massive wave of cabbages is passing by the town, and everyone is excited to catch as many as possible. With everyone participating, the harvest hunt becomes a massive success, and they end up earning quite a lot of coin. While celebrating their success, Kazuma accepts Darkness into the party, who is happy to be used by Kazuma in any way he sees fit. Using the coin they earned in the cabbage hunt, everyone gets some new gear except for Aqua, who ends up having to borrow money from Kazuma so she can pay off a loan she had. Deciding to do a profitable quest to earn more coin, they are surprised to hear that there are no quests available. One of the Demon King's generals has moved in nearby, which made the monsters one would usually still find here run away. With nothing better to do, Kazuma ends up accompanying Megumin on her daily explosion training trips. Since she was warned not to do explosion magic next to the town, the two of them have to venture out further away. Finding an abandoned castle, Megumin uses it as target practice for her spells. Once her explosion magic is cast, Kazuma has to carry her back to town, as she is unable to move on her own. Days come and go, with the two of them traveling to bombard the castle. Kazuma ends up witnessing so many explosions that he develops a sense for rating how good they were. One day when they are all at the guild, an emergency occurs and all adventurers have to gather at the city gates. It turns out that one of the Devil King's generals has appeared, a Dullahan named Verdia. He is extremely upset because someone from the town keeps coming to his castle and casting explosion magic on it every single day. He demands that the person responsible steps forward. Megumin does so and witnessing her bravery for coming forth, he decides to let her be as long as she promises to never do it again. However, she does not want to comply, telling him that she will keep casting explosion magic no matter what. This ticks Verdia off and he casts a curse on her. 
but Darkness jumps in and protects Megumin from the curse by taking it herself. Verdia explains that this curse torments and kills without fail in one week, and should they wish to save Darkness, Megumin has to come to his castle and fight him fair and square. Verdia's speech is derailed when Darkness starts going on about her perverse fantasy, how he cursed her only to use and abuse her against her will. Weirded out by Darkness, Verdia reminds Megumin of what she has to do before leaving. After Verdia leaves, Megumin makes preparations to go to his castle and Kazuma decides to accompany her. But before they can leave, Aqua uses her godly healing powers to dispel the curse from Darkness with no issues. Everyone is surprised by Aqua's power, as this is the first time she has done something useful. Hey, thank you for staying all the way till the end. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. It takes only a second, but it means everything to us. Have a great day and see you in the next video.